Hey, what's up? It's Swamp. Back for another tutorial. Okay, in this one we're going to build a marquee sign. So I'm going to use the sphere because it seems to, uh, it glows really well. It has a nice emission. So go to color, material, turn the emission up, turn the roughness down. And I want to make it black for now. Okay, now I'm going to copy this, bring it up like this, because what I'm going to do is make a circle of these. So we're going to go to editor settings. I'm going to set this to 12. This is just this situation. I'm setting it to 12 just for this. If you want to, um, what you're going to want to do in the end is have multiples of three in the objects that you're animating. So I'm going to hit triangle to copy this. L1 to, uh, to make a copy and to move it, rotate it 12 degrees. All right. So now, if you notice, you can select every third one of these. <laughs> See, it's easy to get lost. So that's why I'm doing this, is because I'm going to color every third one, or this set, first set of third ones, I'm going to make them white so that we can see them. It's not going to matter in the end. Alright, so now you'll notice that there are sets of threes all the way around and it's an even number of three. And that's what you need to animate. So what we're going to do now is start animating them. So what you end up doing is actually just turning on and off three frames. And it's really cool. You can do a different set of patterns with this. And this one I'm just going to do one set going around with the... Uh... Okay, so I need a generic filter. I need a switch filter. We need a variable data source. Now, I'm going to build a loop. Uh, if you watched my vector one, I did this with the vectors too. This is the same kind of thing. It's just a loop through some numbers. Okay, and then we need set value events. Okay. All right. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to test this variable to make sure it's not greater than 2. Now, oops, sorry. If it is greater than 2, then we want to set it back to 1. If it's not, then we're going to increase by 1. So, set this to increase by 1. event targets the variable, event filter will continue on to the switch filter. This one same thing, set it to zero. Alright, now we're going to set this impulse. I'm going to leave it at 60 right now so you can see what it does. We'll go to that, go to that filter. So now, I'm sorry, this needs to be set to one. And that set set to one and this variable needs to be set to one sorry positive one in this case all right now if I hit play you'll see it counts one two three one two three okay so that's what we want so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our color events so you need three color events I actually just need one and we'll copy it. But okay, so color event. Okay, so now this first one, you're going to want to select every third sphere or whatever you're animating. Something that lights up most likely because this type of animation would be most likely done with this situation. Okay. The second one, the very next one, so the one right beside your white one to the right. See, now you know why I colored these. So it makes it a lot easier to get the right one. Okay, and then the last ones. 
will be the third ones. Okay, now what we're gonna do is gonna make these we're gonna make these turn yellow. So let's go to like 55 is kind of okay. It's hard to get it perfect. All right, 55. Now we're gonna copy these, bring them up. So like these, we'll put it underneath the switch filter to make it a little easier to see. Tell you what, let's just group these real quick. Grab our area selector. Like I said, grab our area selector and group these. Actually, I'm going to make them all black too. So make them all black. All right, I'm gonna put them over here just for now so we can see what's going on. All right, put it about like that. Pretty sure we can see that. Okay, so now grab these and put them here. Okay, so now we need a delay. for each one of these. All right, and set these to, I'm gonna set them to seven. Okay, and then each one of these delays, the filter goes to the color event, this color event. Sorry, gotta ungroup these. All right, so now, this color event, set the event filter to go to the delay, and then it delays seven and then it hits this one. Now we're gonna set those in the bottom to be black so that the color will turn on and then turn it back off. So it's gonna stay on for seven frames and then it'll turn to turn back to black. Now what I usually do, I'm gonna set the impulse trigger up here we're going to set this to be six because I want one of the light I want the lights to stay on one frame after they're turned the other the next one's turned on so okay so now a comparison value is going to be this variable we're going to see if it's equals one we're going to go here if it equals two we're going to go here and if it equals three we're going to go here Okay, so now that should. All right, that works. Okay, so now we got to set these to black. As you see, turned them all on. So now set this color on the bottom to black. And now you'll see that it makes a marquee sign. So let's test the track and I'll show you what it looks like. So it looks pretty cool. It's like a circus or something. Bring it a little closer. All right, so let's also do this. Make it night, and you can see a little better what it does. So you see, it's just looping through those three frames. It looks like an endless. You know, the the lights are spinning. You can do different kinds of patterns with those. You can spin them back and, you know, you can spin them in reverse by going to the net, to the opposite color event first. Or you can, uh, you can light two of them up and leave one turned off on each one of those. And that'll give you a different pattern, more light, less dark. It's just, um, just different kinds of patterns that you can do with it. You can do all kinds of stuff. Okay, and this one, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to build an escalator. So what it's going to do is it loops, it's a little short loop that loops the distance between two objects. 
And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so first I'm going to grab this board. I'm going to make a staircase. So make it twice as wide. Okay, we're going to group these together. All right, now I'm going to show you how to use the work plane. So you go to editor settings, snap X, Y, and Z, and set the work plane to be on one of those boards. And then we need to set our snap distance, and I'm just going to kind of guess here about where the uh, about where it's in the center of the board should be good. Okay, so now what you do is you grab it and you copy it and you click it to the drive line. But it actually clicks to the work plane. So you see it just kind of clicks up into the right spot to make the stairs. So this, I'm just hit click on R3, the right stick, and it's just uh, popping them into place. All right, let's do one more. Okay. All right, so now delete this, delete that. Okay, so now you have these stairs. So let's select all these with the area selector. Area selector. Let's make sure it highlights all. Hit X. Hit circle. And then uh, we'll glue these together. All right. So now make sure you go back to your editor settings and turn these off. Because that will screw you up if you're trying to align things to the drive line. So okay, so now we align this to the drive line. Now we're going to animate this. So we're going to go and we're going to need an interval trigger. We're going to need an object position event. And we're going to need curved data source. And we're going to need a variable data source. All right, so now if you recall, the editor settings, we moved at 0.28 meters. So let's set this to 0.28. All right, so now use a linear, linear animation only because it won't look good if you don't use a linear animation. Set the end point to be 0.28, which is a variable. Let's go, let's say 30 and set it to loop. All right, now set your X position to that, set your Y position to that. Don't need to rotate. Event target is going to be the stairs. That's all you need. Okay, and the impulse is going to be one tick every frame and go to the object position event. So now when you play that, you see it's looping and it just goes up one stair and then loops back down. So now what you need to do is you kind of need to hide that. So let's grab, go back to plates. I'm going to grab a plate here. All right, so first we need to put this in the ground a little bit. So you cut off the top step and the bottom step, kind of mask it off with an object. So it looks like it's just coming out of the ground. See, it's an endless loop. Then take this. And we'll put this yeah, about right there. Okay, so now we need something on the sides. So let's grab uh, glass structures. I like these. These are nice. Okay. That one's up pretty good. So there it is, escalator. Let's test it, see what it looks like. Oop, got to fix that. All right, so yeah, you got to make sure you don't uh, Test it. 
you can ride on this because it's it's uh you know the boards still have their their default physics on them but it's not going to give you a ride up like you can't get on it and it pull you up because it's not got a physics motor pulling it so you can ride on it but you can't climb it won't pull you up so but it looks cool it's fun to make stuff like this for the editor so that's how you do a uh, little short loop you can just as long as you line things up with the editor work plane and you move that exact space then it should look like an endless loop and looks like it's just constantly moving so all right thanks for watching and have a good time